look at it's really good. Shh. Quiet, please. Thank you for staying quiet, class. Anyway, hello, class. Welcome to this week's film again lesson. I might not be here at Lowe's College. I will be here at some at some dizzy dizzy dizzy's animal kingdom to go to Darlington, USA, and I'll have to go to um and I have to go to Dizzy Springs to buy some stuff and uh, get to eat here. All right. So on um, so first we will be doing home video releases. On today, we will be doing Don't Breathe 2, 2021 film. Here's a plot in this film. Eight years after the events of the first film, Blind A Army veteran Roman Nordstrom lives with 11-year-old Phoenix and his world dweller, Shadow, in the Detroit suburb. Norman tells Phoenix so that her birth mother died in the fire in their old house. Hermendis, Norman's only connection with society and the veteran army Avenger, Convinces Norman to let Phoenix accompany her on an errand on town to some to have some time out of the house. A bracket looking individual attempts to abduct Phoenix but is scared away by Shadow. His gang follows Hermendis, Ben get back to Norman's where they wait for Hermendis Hernandez to drop Phoenix off, then then kill her when she leaves. They lure Shadow away to kill him. When Norman goes outside to look for Shadow, the gang breaks in to kidnap Phoenix. A struggle ensues between Norman and the gang, and when the and when the gang leader Marilyn tells Phoenix that he is her real father, confirming it by showing that they both have a streak of white hair, it is revealed that Phoenix's house burned down after a meth lab explosion in the basement, and Raylan Raylan had been jailed for eight years. Norman found Phoenix unconscious in the wreckage and took her home to take the place of his of his dead daughter. Upon release, Raylan saw Phoenix alive when she left flowers at her mother's memorial. Phoenix is not unconscious and by a gangster, Raylan sets his own dog to kill Norman, who attracts the animal in the attic. The gang sets the house on fire and leaves the with Phoenix. Norman befriends the dog as they escape together and the dog leads him, him to the gang's hotel hideout. At the hotel, Raylan reveals Phoenix's real name is Tara and introduces her to her mother, who is alive but terminally ill. She explains that she triggered the explosion while cooking meth, resulting in the poisoning of her internal organs. Tara's parents have abducted her only for an organ in transplant for Tara's mother. Due to a lack of drugs and facilities, Tara will be unconscious while her heart is removed. A power, power blackout prevents the procedure. Aurelian's men are ambushed by Norman, who exploits the dark to pick them off one by one. Norman kills the surgeon, and the stray gunshot kills Tara's mother. Norman gouges out Raylan's eyes and leaves him for dead. A badly wounded Norman confirms to Tara that their father was telling the truth. He confesses his crimes, including murder and rape, and tells her to flee to safety. Raylan appears and stabs Norman, only to be fatally stabbed by Tara. Tara attempts to help Norman, claiming she can save him, to which he replies she already has, before scumbling, succubing to his wounds. Tara leaves, then heads to the children's home, children's home she had seen earlier on. She approaches a group of children playing on and introduces herself as, as Phoenix. A short mid credit scene shows Raylan's dog approaching Norman's certainly dead body. The scene ends as the camera focuses on the dog, licking Norman's fingers, hinting that he may still be alive. All right. On, on tomorrow... We will be doing Stillwater Tessa 21 film. Here's a plot to this film. Stillwater, Oklahoma, oil worker Bill Baker travels to Marseille, southern France, to visit his daughter, Allison, who is five years and two, serving a nine-year near prison sentence. While attending university in Marseille, Allison was convicted by of killing her roommate and unfaithful lover, Lena. During Bill's first meeting with Allison, she asks him to pass a note to her defense lawyer, Mrs. 
Le, Quar, Le Parc. Bill finds Le Parc, who tells him that the letter says that Allison heard her from her former professor about a man who claimed to be Elena's killer. Le Parc refuses to attempt to reopen the case because the new information is just heart, heart hearsay. Bill lies to Allison, telling her that Le Parc will petition the judge to reopen the case. Bill meets a woman named Virginie and her daughter Maya at his hotel. He asks Virginie to translate the note. Bill visits the professor mentioned in the note, who gives the, him the phone number of someone who claims to know Lena's killer. Bill and Virginie meet the, with a woman who names the killer as S. Atkin. Combing through social media, Virginie and her friend print photos of people in the social circles of Salison. And Lena, Bill brings the photos to Allison, who identifies Akim. Bill then uses the photo to track down Akim at the housing project, but is beaten by Akim's friends while Akim escapes. The next time that he meets Allison, Bill confesses that he lied about La, La Park, agreeing to help and that, and that he found Akim but didn't tell the police. Enraged the, that Bill squandered her one chance to for exoneration. Allison tells him to never return to the prison. Four months later, Bill is, has remained in Marciali, renting a room for, in Virginie's apartment and working on the construction crew during Allison's on, on one free day out of prison that year. Bill re reconnects with her. Their re regular visits will continue. Bill and Virginie also establish a relationship one night at the Olympic de Marcielli game with Maya, Bill spots Akim and follows him in his truck after the match. Bill approaches Akim, plugs him, and locks him in the basement of the apartment building where Virginie, Maya, and Bill live. Bill implores Maya to keep the secret. Bill play, pays the pri a private investigator to have a lock of Akim's hair tested against the crime scene's DNA evidence. Akim tells Bill that Allison had hired him to kill Lena and that she paid him with a gold necklace bearing the words for Stillwater. Bill begins to doubt Allison's innocence. The private investigator suspects that Bill is keeping Akim in the basement, so he poses as a building inspector and asks Virginie if she has noticed any smells or noises from the basement, which she denies. But her suspicions are raised. Police officers find and detain Bill, but after a fruitless, fruitless search of, of, of the basement, the police question Maya, who lies about not having seen the postage. After the police leave, Virginie reveals that she had released Akim after finding him in the basement. She demands that Bill move out for having put Maya at risk uh, during Akim's abduction. Le Parc meets with Bill to tell him that the DNA test has exonerated Allison, but Bill's numb reaction and perplexes Le Parc. After Allison and Bill return to Oklahoma to a hero's welcome, Bill asks Allison about the Stillwater necklace that he gave her when she had departed to Mar for Marciali. Allison breaks down and admits she hired Akim to evict Lena from the from their house after they had they had broken up, but claims that she did not attend intend for Lena to die. Akim having misunderstood her intentions to put her out due to her then poor grasp of the French language. The next morning, as they sit as they sit on the porch, Allison says everything looks the same in Stillwater, while Bill admits everything looks different on him. All right. On Wednesday, we will be doing the Suicide Squad 2021 film. Here's a plot to this film. Intelligence officer Amanda Walter Waller assembles two Task Force X teams, Conquiali, known as the Suicide Squad, and comprise Belle Reeve, pen pen penitentiary inmates who agree to carry out missions of Walter Waller in exchange for lighter sentences, 
We are sent to the South American island nation of Corto Maltese after its government is overthrown by an anti American re regime and are tasked with destroying the Nazi era laboratory Juhan Jutun Jotunham, which holds a secretive experiment known as Project Starfish. One team is led by Waller's subordinate Corps Colonel Rick Flagg and is almost entirely wiped out by the Porto Maltese a military upon landing. The distraction, this distraction, allows the other team to enter the country detected undetected. The second team is led by assassin Bloodsport, who accepted the mission in order to prevent his daughter from being in incarcerated at Belle Weave, and consists of Peacemaker, King Shark, Polka Dot Men, and Rat, rat Catcher 2. They find Flag at a base camp for rebel soldiers and convince the rebellion leader Sol, Soria, and to assist him. Them. Harley Quinn survives the attack on the first team and is taken captive by the Corto Maltese government. She learns of the new gaming regime's plan to use Project Starfish against other nations. In the Corto Maltese capital, the second team captures the thinker, the lead scientist in charge of Project Starfish, Harley escapes and joins the others, well, who use the thinker to break into jo Jotunheim. Most of the squad wings breaks the facility with explosives as Flag and Ratcatcher 2 enter the underground laboratory with the, tink with the tink thinker. He reveals that Project Starfish is Star the Conqueror, a giant alien starfish, that creates smaller versions of itself to kill people and take control of their bodies. Star and was brought to Earth by the US government, who have been secretly funding experiments of him to in Corto Maltese. For the past thirty years, using thousands of the island's citizens as test subjects, an enraged flag and decides to leak a hard drive containing evidence of this revelation, revelation, but is killed by Peacemaker, who is under secret orders from Waller to cover up the U.S.'s involvement in the experiments. Meanwhile, the skirmish between the squad and the Corto Maltese military leads to Polkadot men accidentally setting the, off the explosives prematurely as the facility falls apart. Peacemaker attempts to execute Ratcatcher 2 for knowing the truth about Starro, but Bloodsport shoots him and takes the drive. Starro escapes the destroying, destroyed laboratory, kills the Think Thinker and much of the military, and begins taking control of the island's population. Waller tells the squad that their mission is complete now and that Jotunheim is destroyed, but Bloodsport chooses to ignore and her and leads to his teammates in battling sorrow. While Wobbler is knocked out by her uh, subordinates to prevent from uh, her from executing the squad. During the battle, Polka Dot Man is killed, Harley pierces a hole in Star Wars eye, and Redcatcher too summons the city's rats to chew the alien to death and from the inside. With the military diverted, Soria takes control of the government and pledges the democratic elections. Bloodsport forces Waller to release him and his surviving teammates from their imprisonment in exchange for keeping the contents of the drive confidential, and the squad is airlifted out of Corto Maltese. In the post credit scene, Peacemaker is shown to be alive and under the supervision of all the subordinates. Alright, that's all the shorts we got. That's all the home video releases we got. So second, we will be doing two scenes of our home video releases. It is about Tari Tari. It's about episode 9 going white and going red. As Konatsu reveals the club will perform a musical drama at the school festival, Ween seems preoccupied by something Meanwhile, she always suggests putting on, on a superhero show at a shopping district and gets Konetsu and the others to play the part of the superheroes, sparking Ween's interest in particular, as Wakanas asks Shiho about how 
my hero went about writing her songs, she suggests asking Nayoko as she previously co wrote a song with her. As the others notice Ween taking the superhero show at a, a bit too seriously, he reveals how the letters he sent to a young kid in Austria named Jan were sent back to him. Meanwhile, Nayoko is worried about some supposed changes planned to Tayoru, Tayoru's superiors. All right. That's all the TV series over home releases we got. So, so third, we will be doing Emma Monkey Pictures and Robert Cow Productions and Donkey Teeth Company shorts. It is about Tom and Jerry. 1947, The Invincible Mouse. In 1947, The Invincible Mouse is, in the summary, says Jerry uses invincible ink to turn invincible and outsmart Tom. And the note says nothing. And, all right, that's all the shorts we got. So, so, so forth. We will be doing a TV series on real releases. It is about Tom. It is about Mei Mei who gets some, who gets the teacher's pet, but Kyubei asks Mei Mei to, about the teacher's pet, and and the teacher's pet his name was Box, and the teacher's pet was and the class and the class and the classes are taking the are petting the white box, the white box, and then and then the teacher comes to class and then teaches about the about the class um, pet. All right. That's all, that's all I, for, I got for today. Let's do some work now. Hey guys, you want to come to DC's Animal Kingdom to go to Downland USA? And we'll go to DC Springs on the, on the week after? Yeah! Okay, let's go then.